Metro Atlanta, home to nearly four million of us now. It is our vibrant, exciting, diverse, and growing region. It is Coca-Cola, CNN, the busiest airport. It's the Braves, the Falcons, and the High Museum of Art. It is Buckhead and Fayetteville, Conyers and Douglasville, and so much more. Welcome to The Shape of Things to Come, presented by Metro Atlanta's regional planning agency, the Atlanta Regional Commission. Through this show, we hope to better acquaint you with this place that we call home and introduce you to some exciting things on the horizon. In this episode, we'll celebrate the 60th anniversary of regional planning in Metro Atlanta. You'll take a trip through the history of this region's development beginning in 1947. You'll also hear from some of today's key leaders about the possibilities for our region's next 60 years. Thanks for joining us for this very special edition of The Shape of Things to Come. Making a difference through leadership and innovation has been a way of life in the Atlanta area for many years. During 2007, we're celebrating the many milestones and visionary actions that have made Metro Atlanta the thriving region it is today. Through the past six decades, many courageous and determined people have had a hand in elevating our region to become the capital of the South and a player on the world stage. Let's take a moment to look back through the eyes of someone who was there. There is the gravest need in Atlanta and the surrounding territory for planning of the most fundamental kind. So recommended a study by the well-known urban planner, Dr. Thomas Reed. The year was 1938. I was just a child then, but I've heard that growth was already creating problems even back then. Many streets were too narrow or unpaved. There were just a few parks and most housing was inadequate. Dr. Reed believed that while area governments shared economic and social bonds, their working at cross purposes was hampering regional success. His prescription, a regional planning agency. It wasn't until 1947, though, that his visionary advice was heeded with the formation of the Metropolitan Planning Commission, or MPC. The Atlanta area was taking off and its population had grown to more than half a million. The new agency went right to work, creating a master plan for an area that included Fulton and DeKalb counties and the city of Atlanta. William B. Hartsfield was mayor of Atlanta at the time and would lead the city for 24 years. His vision was already in motion, building the nation's first air traffic control tower at the airport, which would one day bear his name. The 50s were just a golden time for home builders. Fancy new highways began turning the region's outlying farmland into suburbs. My parents bought their first home around that time. In 1950, the building of Buford Dam and Lake Lanier began. Mayor Hartsfield made sure that water supply was specified as a purpose of the dam, a visionary stroke that truly paved the way for the region's growth. Early regional plans called for developing a regional transit system, containing growth inside a beltway. Could that be today's I-285? And building Peachtree DeKalb Airport, a civic center, a merchandise mart in downtown Atlanta, several major parks, including Stone Mountain, and a portion of which would become the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. A few years later, plans included new radial freeways reaching outward from the central city, plans for DeKalb General and South Fulton hospitals, and express buses that would run on new expressways. These plans became the blueprints for the metropolis we call home today. After hitting the one million population mark and recognizing the need for broader planning, Clayton, Cobb, and Gwinnett counties joined MPC. They even gave the expanded agency a bigger name in 1961, the Atlanta Region Metropolitan Planning Commission. In the 1960s, while folks cruised in their fintail cars enjoying the open road, the regional planning agency was exploring new ways of getting around. Its report, What You Should Know About Rapid Transit, 
proposed the first regional transit plan for the metro area. Its adoption in 1962 laid out the MARTA rail system. While hitting the ground running with new transit and highway plans, including I-285, did you know that the agency also developed the first regional airport plan in the country? It called for the first parallel runways in the nation, leading, of course, to today's busiest airport in the world. In 68, the area's first plans calling for concentrated employment centers, including Buckhead and Perimeter Center, were released. Business folks really started to take notice. By the end of the 60s, the last two links of 285 were completed, and the region adopted a water and sewer plan. We were getting ready for some serious growth. And how about those 70s? We went big time, didn't we? A group of Georgia legislators, including Sam Nunn, Howard Atherton, Grace Hamilton, and Elliot Levitas, realized we needed to work together a whole lot more. And that year, the General Assembly passed legislation creating today's Atlanta Regional Commission. Dan Sweat went to work as the reinvented agency's first director, and one of my personal favorites, Cobb County's Ernest Barrett, became its first chairman. ARC's inaugural battle was the protection of the Chattahoochee River. At the time, developers couldn't take their eyes off of it, and our water supply was threatened. ARC proposed limiting development along the river and requiring stricter protections. Well, the new plan came under heavy attack, and the agency took him to court. The case was settled out of court, but it settled something else. The issue of whether ARC was willing to stand tough behind its plans. The very next year, the General Assembly turned ARC's plan into law with the passage of the Metropolitan River Protection Act. Without this visionary action, our key water source could have been a very endangered river with developments lining its banks. Around the same time, the planning area grew to include Douglas and Rockdale counties. Recognizing that people are the heart of any region, ARC helped form the Alliance for Human Services Planning and was designated the region's area agency on aging in the 70s. I'm sure glad they planned early for all the boomers. Geez, you couldn't stir those guys with a stick. And I remember the day in 1979 when the first MARTA train whisked riders from Decatur to downtown Atlanta. All that planning had finally paid off. Like I said, big time. The 80s started off with that awesome opening of our world-class airport. Some of us still get lost there once in a while. The airport and our growing economy helped ARC to be selected to administer workforce and job training assistance to keep us competitive. And in 1984, our metro area hit the two million mark. What a celebration. As developments grew bigger and bigger, ARC began reviewing these major projects and updating its plan for the region's quality development. You know, if we thought the 1980s were a booming decade, the real home run was on deck. The 90s would smash all growth records. The decade with the biggest community visioning effort ever conducted in the country had arrived. Thousands of Metro Atlantans voiced their desires for the future. New leadership programs and civic groups sprung up, and more folks got engaged in decision making. I remember those booming years of the 90s when three more counties joined the ARC planning area. Henry, Fayette, and Cherokee. It was our region's fastest growth spurt in history. 1996, what a spectacular year. We reached the three million population mark just in time to host the Centennial Olympic Games. What an incredible moment in the spotlight for our entire region. And traffic was kept to a minimum thanks to ARC's transportation planning. Importantly, thousands of visitors took home warm, vivid memories of their Olympic stay. To build on our Olympic success, ARC launched the Livable Centers Initiative in 1999 to encourage quality growth efforts. Today, nearly 70 communities are pursuing plans to enhance livability. The new century brought the creation of the Metropolitan North Georgia Water Planning District to ensure and protect our long-term water sources. Also, plans for investing billions of dollars in new transportation facilities were adopted closely linked to innovative community designs. 
Then, in a very bold move, we returned to the kind of visionary transit planning from our early days to form the first ever regional transit planning board in 2006. Its purpose? To work cohesively to develop a seamless regional system to serve our growing needs. Through leadership, vision, and action, our metro area has grown from a small southern city to become a major player on the world stage. I've enjoyed looking back with you, and like I always say, we're still booming after all these years. <laughs>